here today with one of the Henrys. This is our main Henry, played by JC. Can you say hi? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> She's so excited. She actually behind the scenes secret. She's so excited to be working today because she's had a little bit of time off since we shot the film. So um, she's pretty stoked about uh, she saw the bait bag that I'm wearing and she knew it was uh, acting time. So um, so today I just kind of thought um, it would be fun to show you some a uh, couple maybe of her tricks that she she did in the film um also i was gonna show you guys uh some behind the scenes tools that the animal trainers use when we're on set and um, you can actually make your own tools at home and i thought it would be really cool to challenge everybody who has a dog and hopefully most of us have dogs um <laughs> to uh to actually do like a TikTok video and use the hashtag think like a dog um, I thought it'd be really fun to, uh, I'll give you some tips on like how to do some training with your dog at home, some easy stuff and like do like what your what you think your dog would like if you could think like a dog you know what your dog would see or maybe um something along the lines of you know your dog you're bored in the house you know and um you're stuck in your quarantine and um something like with your dog being bored or something funny like that so um i just thought it would be a cute idea to do so um Anyway, I just wanted to show you some of, uh, I guess we'll show you some of JC's fun tr tricks that she likes to do to get her warmed up. So one of the tools that we use, of course, uh, when we are training dogs on set are we use lots of snacks. So this is their craft services. Um, it's also a bait bag or a treat bag. And that is uh, uh, what we use to motivate them. Um, you know, actors are motivated by the arts or sometimes the money. Um, but animals are motivated by love and praise and treats, lots of treats. Um, as uh, Gil and uh, Gabe know, we went through lots of treats on set. So, um, so one of the things we do is anytime they're doing the correct behavior, um, we give them a snack. So it's all positive. Um, there's no uh, yelling at the dog. There's no negativity. It's all like you get a treat um, and you, re you, you reinforce what you want them to do. One of the tools we use to train dogs on set um, is a clicker. You can buy a clicker. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give her a snack because she's waiting for it. Um, you can buy a clicker at any pet store. It's a really, really cool tool. It's like a Pavlovian thing where basically, like when you're training a dog to do something, like I'll show you how I use it. So let's say you're training to, you're a dog to lay down on cue. So I'm going to take this treat and I'm going to lure into the position. Sit down. And the moment her body stay, lays down or does the behavior you're asking them to do, you're going to click the clicker and that basically tells them, that's right. And then you follow it up with a treat. That's how you teach them to do something over and over. So um, that's how say, Gabe taught me. Exactly. That's how you train directors too. Yeah, so you also needed lots of love and affection and treats. <laughs> exactly. Those are the best ways to train anybody or any animal. So, um, so let me show you some of the things she knows. So, JC, come, sit, good, high five, good girl, stay, high five, good. So, how you would train your dog to do that at home is basically um, you could either lift their paw and give them a treat and repeat that several times. Or sometimes when you scratch them under the chin, they automatically kind of like will, will lift their paw a little. The second that paw lifts up, whatever one you're asking them for, she's like, what do you want me to do? Um, the second that paw lifts up, you want to click and then you want to give them that treat. And you always want to make sure you give them that treat immediately after they hear that, that clicking sound so that they know they did the right thing. It's almost like taking a still photo of a dog um, and it clicks in their brain of like, oh cool, I did the right thing. So that way they know to repeat that behavior. Um, one of the things you can do for your TikTok videos, if you're gonna do one at home, is say you're trying to make a dog uh, look bored. Um, let me see if I could do it up here. So down, lay down is we probably don't have enough room up here, but you can actually lure the dog over without falling off. So I don't want her to fall off the table, but you can lure the dog over with the treat to make them look like they're sleeping. Believe it or not, like say when 
we're on set. Um, the, you know, the dogs aren't really sleeping on set with a crew full of 200 people. So we lure them over and we train them to sleep and to relax. And, and you can do that by luring them over to their side. Um, if you're doing a TikTok video at home, you can actually, if you want to do it the really easy way, you can film your dog um, actually sleeping. And then one of the things I like to do is like do like a, a zoom in, you know, toward their eyeball and then like show what, what would your dog be dreaming about or thinking about um, or, say, you know, what would your dog say if you could think like a dog? Um, so one, another, some of the other tools we use on set, she really wants this one. So say you're on set and you need a dog, um, you physically can't be somewhere, so you can buy a back scratcher, believe it or not, pretty much anywhere. She smells it. So you take a big old hunk of meat, <laughs> this is how we train them, and your dog obviously is gonna look at it and sit. <laughs> I don't want her to fall off, but anyway, there you go, good job. So one of the, one of the uh, ways you could teach them to look at something, say like sometimes we want the dog to, uh, a lot of the time we want the dog to look at an actor, of course, um, and not look at the trainer, or look in a corner of a room where we can't physically be because there's something there. Um, you could take a treat at home, like chicken or steak or something really delicious. We call it a high value treat. And you put the tree, you put the, the meat on the end of the stick, and as soon as they look at it, good. You pay them from that, and you teach them to watch it or to look. That's the cue we give to dogs when we're on set. Um, if we want them to sit, JC, watch me. Good. I know. You know how to speak. Um, that's another really fun behavior you can teach a dog. So how we get a dog to bark on cue, we call it speak. JC. Good. Um, say you get them excited about something. Say there's like a toy and they're really excited about it. Um, and as soon as they bark, you, um, JC, hop up. Good girl. As soon as they bark, you want to give them either the toy that they, they want or you want to give them a treat and reinforce that. And, and, and you repeat that enough times, um, you start to call it speak after they do it a couple of times. And then this little thing that I'm doing here is a lot of the time we're on, well, most of the time we're on set, there's dialogue, the actors are talking. So you don't always, you're not always able to actually say the word speak or down or stay or sit. So we do a lot of hand signals. Um, so uh, we teach the dog. So without me having to say anything, if I'm across the room and I need her to bark, then we have these little hand signals um, like down. Um, so she also, we, we simultaneously teach the dog um, how to do verbal commands and also um, nonverbal commands, so hand cues. So, um, so if you're doing an, another really cool behind the scenes trick um, is you want your dog, say you want your dog to look like really excited or, oops, my head thing fell, my earpiece fell out. Hold on one second. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Say you want your dog to look really, really excited. Um, you could take a squeaky out of a toy and, and you know, obviously they're going to be like, whoa, what's that? And that's um, something we use on set a lot to get like certain emotional reactions. So like a dog's supposed to look really excited. We'll have like little uh, whistles and little squeakers, um, little things to give that emotional reaction from dogs so that they, um, you know, uh, whatever the this, this scene calls for, they emote that behavior. Um, like if you want your dog to look sad, um, obviously on set, we can't ever frighten a dog or do something to make it actually sad. So we teach them something called like a head down. If you could, I don't know if you could see her head down. She's a little in an awkward position, but this cue means to lower her head. And um, we teach them that and that makes them look sad. Um, so there's a lot of super cool tricks you can teach dogs at home. Uh, believe it or not, there's a lot of awesome tutorials on YouTube. Like if you want to go, how do I teach uh, my dog to high five or how do I teach my dog to lower its head? You can actually Google search that on YouTube and there's all these amazing tutorials that'll teach you how to, to um, train your dogs at home and then you could do really cool videos. and. Uh, you can be just like me, be an animal trainer. Um, yeah. I think that's everything. Does I, anyone have any can questions? I, can I say one thing, Sarah? You can, yes, um, of course. I, I have been lucky enough 
you know, to have worked with a, a number of different trainers and different companies and animals. Um, and I have, and uh, not to embarrass you, I have never worked with a company that can get a dog to connect so closely to an actor. And when you guys see this film, I don't know if you've seen it or not yet, but you will see, you'll be very surprised at how you believe the dog is communicating with Gabriel. Uh, and that comes from the way Sarah and her team give the dog so much love for months before training, months before shooting. And they spend so much time, loving time with these dogs that they implicitly trust them. So you don't get any of that skittish, like the dog's like this, and then the dog's like that, and the dog's like this. I mean, when you see the film, you will see, I, I believe, uh, a surprisingly powerful connection between Gabriel and, and, and Henry in the film. And, and also part of what they did with that because to, to make that, and again, I've never seen this either, the instant Gabriel Gabriel showed up for rehearsals, the instant they showed up, bam, they put Gabriel together with Henry and asked Gabriel, and he was terrific, literally any free moment Gabriel had for the first month, he was just hanging out with Henry. And that bond and that trust was you, the performance from Henry is dramatically different than anything I've seen in, in, a, in a dog movie before. I'm really proud of it. And thank you for that, Sarah. That's pretty incredible. Oh, thank you, Gil. Yeah. Um, it, yes, thank you so, so much for saying that. I, I did see the movie, by the way. I just wanted to oh. let you know. And um, I watched it twice and loved it. And I totally saw exactly what you were talking about. The connection between Gabriel and Henry was unbelievably beautiful yeah i mean oh, definitely ma definitely made me cry a couple times oh so, yeah yeah what because of beautiful. gabriel's bad performance you mean <laughs> yeah that was, no. that was disturbing <laughs> but you're henry was great henry was great thank Sarah, you thank you so so much for taking the time to do this i, I hope you're you guys welcome. appreciate it yeah she's, Absolutely. she's remarkable right. thank you you too bye guys thank you bye, bye sarah let you guys up in your rooms. Look for your invite. Can't see anything yet, though. Oh, great. There we go. I see you. Hi, everybody. This is Marie from Click. So everybody should be here. Um, as we said, I will go ahead and call you one by one. Um, and you can go ahead and ask a question to both um, Gail and Gabriel, and if we have a minute at the end, we can add some additional questions. We have 20 minutes. So, Kathy, you are up first. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Hi. So, I was wondering what, hi, I was wondering um, what made you to want to do this movie, and what is it that you would like your audience goers uh, to learn when they uh, finish watching the movie. What what is what is the takeaway? Who who is that question for? Both of us. Um, to all of you, if I if I can get it from all of you or just one. Go ahead, Gabriel. All right, uh, I'll answer like the. <laughs> Perfect. Um, you were wonderful, by the way. My son and I watched the movie, and he absolutely loved you. It was you were wonderful. Thank you. That, that means a lot. Thank you, honestly. Um, as far as like why I wanted to um, film it uh, after reading the scripts, what really spoke to me yes. was just, I liked the message of um, how powerful and important um, appreciating the simple things um, and actually like thinking like a dog, which is uh, a huge message of the film is just, appreciating the the people around you and uh, all the things that you take for granted um, and just all the people that you that you love and really giving back to them um, and that was really what spoke to me the most when I read the script was that message which was uh, a really big part of why I wanted to film it and then also 
I really just liked the dynamic between Oliver and the dog. And I thought Oliver was a really fun character. Um, and I, I love the, the whole family dynamic. I Obviously, I don't think most of you have watched it yet, but when you watch it, the family dynamic is really, really heartwarming and believable. Um, so that's why I wanted to film it. Thank you. Um, for me, um, well, <laughs> since I wrote it, the message, it, it's a different thing than, uh, than Gabe, um, but I'm, I'm glad that he <laughs> responded to the script the way he did, because I wrote this um, script, not to be a downer, but I wrote this when I knew I was gonna get divorced. I, or I believed I was going to get divorced. And I had two young kids, eight and 11. I was very concerned about what was going to happen to them. Are they going to be okay? Um, and during this time, I actually found myself being comforted by my dog a lot. I'm not joking. Um, you know, I'd be in bed and I'd be nervous. And what do I do? And should I leave? Should Do I wait till they go to college? You know, a lot of parents have these unfortunate dilemmas. And I realized there was, you know, my dog is always happy. He's just always happy. And so I wanted to, you know, I realized, wow, I, I, I thought to myself, I wish I could be like that. Like, how does he do that? And then, you know, it, it's, it's obvious. The dog to me is very much, a dog is very much like a baby in that all babies want to do is love and be loved. That's it. And so that's sort of the message of the film. You know, if there is a takeaway, which is, you know, let's stop overcomplicating our lives and having all of these messages that, you know, kind of deflect what is really in front of you, you know, because of your upbringing or whatever. Um, just appreciate the simple things and so many problems will dissipate. I truly believe it. So, and, uh, yeah, I think we, I think we captured that. I was, I was not to embarrass, um, uh, gay, but, um, you know, we were very close to shooting. I was, I was, I think I was like three weeks out without the lead without Gabe, without the boy. And Andrew Lazar and I had read, oh my God, hundreds. And Gabe uh, came to my house actually and read for Andrew and I, and within 45 seconds, I, I think I had tears in my eyes because I realized I, I, I found an extraordinary talent that would elevate the quality of my film and my instincts were right. He killed it. He, he killed it. He's so talented. Thank you. It's true. The movie is amazing. It's filled oh. with love and I can't say enough about it. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Oh my God, of course. Uh, next up we have Melissa Northway. You can unmute yourself. You're still in okay. there. You go. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing that, uh, Gail. I was wondering where you got, uh, what inspired you to write the the film? Because if any, you know, pet owner, we all adore our pets, especially dog owners. And I've always wondered, <laughs> what's he thinking? Right. Me too. Yeah, so I'm glad he gave you a lot of comfort during that tough time. Yeah. Um, definitely appreciate that. But um, I guess I, same question for both of you. Um, what would you What would you say was your favorite day on the set, and why? And either one can start. Wow. Was it a, a moment in the movie? Well, I think uh, for me, I'll I'll go. I Yes, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, well, I think there were two, there were two outstanding um, moments that came to mind. The, when we shot the scene where Gabriel came downstairs and confronted his parents, jeez, I'm almost emotional now, 
And he came down the stairs and confronted his parents whether or not dad was moving and are you guys getting divorced? Wow. That to me, that, that was, I always felt was the most, the most emotional scene in the film and probably one of the most important scenes for Gabriel's character. Because that is the scene where, I hate to sound manipulative, but I really wanted Gabriel to break the audience's heart, which is, would then become what they call in film writing, the, the, the rooting element. And the rooting element is, why are you rooting for a character? Why are you willing to watch this movie? And for 90 minutes or whatever it is. And um, I knew that if we did a good job in that scene, then the audience would be willing to go along for the ride. You, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I, I can honestly say, um, yeah, <laughs> I was totally crying on set. I literally, I wrote the damn thing and had no, no idea it could be that powerful. I was just stunned by uh, everyone's performance, but in particular, uh, Gabriel's, because to achieve that much emotional depth at his age, when he was like 13 or whatever it was, that's extraordinary. That's why there's like two amazing breakout child actors in the world. You know, Natalie Portman was one of them way back in the day, and I don't even know who else, but. It's, it, 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 it's a tremendous uh, accomplishment for a person as young as that. Right. And so that was, I, I, was, I was just, I, I couldn't have been happier that day, even though I was crying. Aww. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, if I, you know, it's like, I don't know if you ever saw 10 Things I Hate About You, but there was a speech that um, Julia Stiles gave, the 10 Things I Hate About You speech. It was very similar to me. It was just like, oh my God, I am looking at greatness. You know, and that, for a director, uh, I don't know if there's a better high than that. Um, right. And then the other, the other thing that just popped into my head for your question is that when I was, um, I had hiked two hours, for two hours in 97 degree heat <sighs> with an entire 100 man and woman film crew hiking into the Great Wall of China. And we finally, everyone is soaked. I don't, I, don't, I don't mean like, you know, the ring, you see? I mean, everyone was drenched and it was exhausting. And then the next thing I know, we're getting ready to shoot and I'm, I'm flying two drones and, I've, and I'm directing a movie that I wrote my son is standing next to me on the Great Wall of China. There's a crew of 100, and I'm shooting this movie because I had an idea three years ago, and I'm on the Great Wall of China. It was, um, that was pretty cool. That is very cool. Oh, man. And because they gave us so much freedom where we could shoot, uh, interestingly, because the, um, one of the co-financiers of the movie, his dad was a general, in the Chinese army. Oh my God. And it's, oh no, it was like we were royalty. So it, that to me was also, that was like, that's one of the joys that movie making, if you're lucky enough to be working in movies, you, you can, you know, not only do you get to travel, but standing on the Great Wall, two drones and a hundred people looking at me, didn't speak a word of English. That was pretty awesome. That's yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's me. Um, for me, I also have like two days that come to mind. The first, the first day was one of my favorites just because like meeting everyone on set, meeting all the crew, I had already met Gail and some of the producers, but meeting JC and getting to bond with her and try to build chemistry, um, not just with JC or the doc, but also with like all of my other castmates, and my parents, um, is always a really special thing when you're first starting a film to, uh, to bond with people. Um, so that looking back, especially once you're done with something, looking back to the first day is always kind of nostalgic. So um, that one. And then also the last day when I wrapped, everyone, I don't know whose idea it was, but there was a plan 
um, that had been set up for a while from one of the crew members where they blindfolded me and they like led me to a different part of the set. Um, and I had no idea what was going to happen. And then I think it was, it was like a crew of almost two, it was like 200, 300 people. And when they pulled off the blindfold, everyone had silly string and just like <laughs> at me for like 30 minutes probably of just like straight silly string, um, which was insane. It was like by far, it, it was in. I didn't know there could be that much silly string in like one. <laughs> but uh, it's probably those. To how much the crew loved you. That's so great. That's like a great birthday party idea. Yeah, I, I it had really never got him. Got it. Yeah, it was. It was. I have a video of it. It was like by far, I think, my favorite rock day. Oh my gosh, day. that's fabulous. That's a great idea. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Sure. Um, Donna Borowski. First off, thank you. Loved watching the movie. I just got a new rescue dog, so it was fun to um, see the tricks because we're working on that. So I appreciated hearing all that as well. Um, we know dogs are unpredictable and even the best trained dogs get to get a little crazy sometimes. So my question for either one of you, both of you is, did, um, did you get any inspiration while you were filming that changed things up? So you had maybe some improvisation from the dog that actually made it into the movie, something that maybe would like happened while you were filming if, oh my gosh, I need to leave that in. That's a good question. <clears throat> it's interesting. Just just thinking back, you know, obviously most of the things that you do with a dog on set, they're they're really well planned out, and and they have to be, and they are planned out a month or two in advance, and and then um, uh, Sarah would send me videos. Here, here's what I'm thinking, and here's how you know, like the bit. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of any of the bits. Then she would bring the dog to set, and then she would show me, you know, how it works. Um, uh, you know, and kind of just because the dogs, you know, they need to learn that pattern because if he's not performing, it's a lot of money if we're waiting around, you know, for, uh, for a trainer to, to calm a dog down. And, you know, another phenomenal advantage of using Sarah was, I don't think we ever waited for the dog to settle down. And, you know, it's, it's a hundred grand a day, if not more. So if you lose two hours on set with a crying baby or a, a dog, it's, it's a lot of money. Um, I think the only bit we came up with that I hadn't planned, and I think it, was, it wasn't something the dog did, it was something that I thought, Jesus, this dog is so responsive, I wonder if he could do this. And we had the dog pull the carpet out from one of the actors and caused the actor to fall. That was, uh, I think, worked really well. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm so sorry. I can't think of anything no, else. Don't be sorry. That was great. Well, I, it, it, it's so, it's so. You know, you you don't have the time to go. Oh yeah. Now, you know, did I realize? You know, while shooting oh my God, I can get Henry to do this a ton. And, and a lot of that had to do with Henry or whatever dog we were using, but primarily JC, um, working with eye contact. Because when I realized that he could really look right at that lens and for a long period of time, oh my God, I would immediately adjust shooting because especially in this scene, I don't know if you remember, but when Henry jumps onto the bed and explains the plan, it, to, to basically how to make mom and dad, you know, they've lost the sense of love and it's because they forgot who they were. And we got to bring them back to that when all we had was each other and blah, blah, blah. And we have to teach mom and dad how to think like a dog. When I realized I had the ability with this particular dog to look literally right in the lens, right? So I changed my shot pattern so that then Gabriel was looking right into the lens and it 
I am telling you, it's such a powerful connection because they're both looking right at each other. And I've never been able to do that with an animal before. And by it's animal, I mean, I mean Gabe. Um, that's it for me. What, what do you think, Gabe? Were, were there things that like came up impromptu? I can't quite remember. I don't know. I, I agree with you. I think uh, it's kind of the testament just to how well behaved and how great um, JC was and that it speaks to Sarah and all the other trainers. Um, but I can't, I can't really think of like anything that happened on set, but specifically with the, the dogs that wasn't planned. Um, I guess just like there were probably little things like in the scene, at the, in the very last scene, um, he's kind of jumping up and down. Oh yeah, that was cool. On, a, on all of us. And a lot of that wasn't like, land necessarily it was just kind of like letting us play with the dog and letting him run wild and jump around um so i guess that's kind of like the only thing that comes to mind um but yeah I don't know. well thank yeah. you both so much very much enjoyed it thank you i'm so glad thank you, thank you. Uh, i have to change our order around real quick so uh vina you're up next hi this hi. question is for gabe i was just wondering what was the best part about having a dog as your co-star um, I don't know. There were, there are a lot of benefits. Um, for one, it's, uh, it's, it's really, um, like a, just lifts your spirit to always have something that, uh, it, it feels like you're communicating with it a lot, even though you're probably on like a lesser scale than you would think. Um, but it, it just feels like she was always excited to be around people and, be on set and kind of that influenced me to just be happy to go to set every day and like uh, be happy to work. Um, so that was really, really beneficial. Um, I worked with dogs a few times before and I, this one was different. I mean, I don't know how else to explain it just because she was so sweet and I genuinely felt like I had a connection to her. Like she was my own dog. Um, so uh, it was, um, it was just a lot of fun to have that much positive energy to be around all the time. I love that. Do you have your own dog? I don't right now. I, I grew up with like five dogs, I think, but I don't currently. I have a cat, but I, I grew up around dogs. I love dogs. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bina. Um, Lynette? Hi. I want to share that my son and I watched the movie and he loves it. He's ready to see it again and again. So that's always a good sign. So thank you for this family film. Um, I know that Sarah shared that Henry is really a girl. So are there any other fun facts that you can share about the film that maybe the audience doesn't know? The Gil was harder to work with than JC. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> um... Did I stump you guys? <laughs> no, no, I, it, you know, it's, it's um, it was pretty funny. The first week of shooting, we shot at the house, and the the uh, it was on a street in New Orleans, and every day, all day even into the night, there would be about 20 of the neighbors sitting in the front yard right across from us and they would all have little tables and they'd bring out their lounge chairs, I'm not joking, and they would all be drinking wine, watching the movie be made all day long, 20 of them. It was like so wild to me. It was really cool, but they were so fascinated. But it wasn't one day. It was every day. And it was so Southern, you know, it was like the Southern women with the wine and the thing and they're all dressed up. And I'm like, oh, wow. Um, that's the only thing I can really think of, you know, offhand that would be intriguing for an audience to know. Um, if you can shoot me your email address, I'll think on that and I'll, sh I'll shoot you an answer. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Can you, uh, how do we, can I just, should I just give it to you? I'm sure Nikki will take care of it. Fine. 
Yeah, but you're more than welcome to shoot me an email and I'm happy to answer your question. Thanks, I appreciate Think it. Thank you for the film. Thank you. Thanks, Lynette. Um, Amanda Taylor. Hello, everybody. I'm Amanda from Guide for Mom's Crazy Mandy Reacts on YouTube. Subscribe. <laughs> and my question is for uh, Gil uh, over there. Um, so we've seen movies like this before, right? Like you can listen, you can hear your dog talk or you know what your ba what babies are saying or even read the minds of people. But usually it's like with kind of a magical or mystical thing that happens to do that, you know, to make that happen. But in this film, it's like real science-based, which I love because I'm a science nerd, you know? And what I wanted to say, one of my favorite lines in there was when I even wrote it down, I'm going to crush you like Edison cr did Tesla. I was dying. <laughs> but I wanted to know why you took on, you know, made this such a scientific type movie, science-based. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I actually believe I, I used to think in my lifetime, but maybe not now, but <laughs> in Gabe's lifetime. Uh, but I've always believed, even when I was a kid, that within my lifetime, um, we'll be able to read other people's minds electronically. And, and I just think that's fascinating. I think the concept of, of that potential technology being in the future, whoa. It, it brings up a lot of possibilities and a lot of dangers, actually. Mm -hmm. And I wanted the movie to be realistic. I didn't want it to be some kid movie with a talking dog. Yeah. And as, you, as I'm sure you saw in the film, the parents, they had very real roles. Mm -hmm. They weren't like the old people upstairs. You know what I mean? And when I was doing the research for the film, um, I was, I was trying to just get words that made sense. So I was, I was writing up thought transference and looking up thought transference and uh, analog sound to digital energy, blah, blah, blah. And I came across an interview with a scientist, I think it was in 1862 or three or something. And the scientist <clears throat> was doing in 1860 something, the exact experiment that I did in the movie. And that scientist, because he believed um, that you could, in fact, if you had an, a, a, sense, a sensor sensitive enough to read the electrical current and then amplify it, mm -hmm. in theory, it should work. That wacky scientist was Alexander Graham Bell. He was literally working on this thought, this thought transference as early as 62. And when I read the article, first of all, I was stunned. But he said, if you apply the laws of electricity to the human brain, and electrical thoughts are electricity, if you apply those laws, you should, in fact, be able to amplify those laws. And that's pretty cool. So anyway, that's why. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'll wrap it up, because I know there's a lot of questions that after me. But I love the thank movie. You appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. Um, Carrie? Yablowski? You got me as soon as the kids come downstairs to interrupt, <laughs> of course. As it <laughs> always. Without fail. <laughs> so um, my questions for Gil, there have been so many um, great questions so far, but I, is that Skittles there on the couch with you? Oh, you see him? Oh, there he is, yeah. yeah. So, you know, <laughs> since Skittles was such an inspiration for the film, what does Skittles think of the film? He liked it. He felt that his performance was um, actually, it's funny, you know, during the editing process, of course, you know, I would take the cut and I'd watch it at home and I'd watch it at home with my kids because they gave me good feedback. And I am telling you, Skittles would sit, I'm not joking, in the middle of the floor watching that TV. And whenever one of the dogs came on the screen, he would walk right up to the TV and stare at the dog. It was <laughs> awesome. I actually have a video of him doing that. I mean, he was, he knew that that was a dog on screen. You know, and it was like watching. So yes, Skittles enjoyed the film. It's important, you know. Yeah, he he wanted more close-ups, but uh, <laughs> yeah. And then um, my other question is, is for Gabe, and it's um, what was your favorite part about um, being Oliver? Um, so I 
I really liked the uh, science aspect actually of his character because I've never really I've never played a character that was um, that interested in science, let alone like an inventor. Um, so it was really fun to like mess around with ideas and uh, be able to like talk about fake inventions that he made, especially the main invention that kind of goes wrong and like leads to the whole premise of the film. Um, but that was just really fun to be able to play around with and mess with because I've never actually got to do that before. And I'm like, I wouldn't say I'm interested in science because I don't know that much about it, but the little that I do know, I've always found really fascinating. Um, so that was probably one of my favorite parts. Sure. That's great. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you. Um, next up, Patty Holiday. Hey guys, how are you? I have a question about your co-stars. You guys had a lot of great people in this film, but what I want to know is who, out of everybody on set with you, kind of embraced that think like a dog mentality. And it's okay if it's you, you can say that, it's allowed, but I'm just kind of curious who's already living their life that way. Like who, who would you point out and say, they've got this figured out. Gabe? Um, is that your answer or are you giving it to me? No, 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 no. I'm, <laughs> I'm throwing it to you. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I don't know. I kind of, Josh, I think, Josh Dumont is out of that room. I, yeah. I would say Josh. Yeah, he, he is really positive and I feel like he, he has a good mentality. We had a lot of conversations. Um, and I, I, I would say out of everyone to that, definitely Josh. Awesome. I would say the same. I would say Josh as well. And just personally, it's, it's how I am trying to learn to live my life. Um, I, have, I have personally done a, a lot of work on myself, spiritually. I know that sounds corny to some, but the, the, my comfort level at the age of 65 is... I'm a different man than I was five years ago. And boy, do I enjoy it. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Who cleans your damn kitchen, by the way? Jeez. Isn't that gorgeous? It's stunning, isn't it? It's, it's beautiful. It's a Zoom background. <laughs> what? It's a Zoom background. Yeah. Oh, you're kidding. I thought that was your kitchen. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm hiding the hot mess that's reality. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's cute. I want to do that next time. <laughs> All right, next up we have our junior reporter, Linda Lee Rose. Hi. Hi. Um, I loved the movie so much. I was crying for a lot of it because it was just, it was happy tears and then like sad tears. It was just incredible and I loved it so much. Good job. Um, so I have a question for Gabe. So um, you said that you had such a strong bond with um, Henry. Um, and so on the last day of filming, what was the experience like having to say, say goodbye to all the cast, but also having to say goodbye to Henry? Well, it's always really hard when you have to uh, say goodbye to everyone. Um, on set because like at the end of it you're really a family because you're working together but especially if, if it's a taxing film like this one was kind of emotionally taxing at times um, it forces you to bond with everyone around you so um, and I had already actually worked with a lot of the crew so I had a, a really strong connection to uh, a lot of the crew and, and a lot of the cast um, so it, it's never easy but I just like to think of it as you'll probably see them again. Like I've seen a lot of the same people since I filmed. Um, so it, I don't really think of it as like goodbye, which makes it easier. Um, but especially saying goodbye to, to JC and all the other dogs and all the trainers was, was really difficult because um, again, I, we formed such a special bond and I, I haven't really had anything similar to it in any other project I've done. Um, it was it was honestly like having to say goodbye to my own dog, which would obviously be hard. So it was definitely hard, but I'm sure I'll probably work with a lot of the same people again, and hopefully, Jason. Yeah, hopefully. 
things. Um, so Gil, uh, so they say that in Hollywood to never work with kids and animals, and you had both in this movie. So which were like which was the most difficult to work with? Gabe has a bad attitude. Um, he's a very angry kid. And I didn't know he's also a professional knife thrower um, and has a gambling problem. Uh, you know, I, I have to say, I, you know, clearly you can get that. I'm out of my mind for Gabriel. I mean, I, I literally, not that I, I wish I discovered him because he already had a full career before me, but <laughs> which is annoying. But I, I don't know. I, I just kind of felt like, like I did when I cast Heath Ledger. I thought, oh my God, this is such a smart, talented guy. Um, uh, he just brought me a tremendous amount of joy and pride and also made me so happy that the words and the thoughts that I were, was able to write down or the ideas that I wanted to communicate to him while shooting his delivery of everything was, I was constantly stunned by this young man's abilities. It's the truth. Um, as I've said, you know, the dogs were ridiculous. I would hire Sarah tomorrow if I had a movie. Um, but, you know, obviously I form a, a more powerful connection with a human being. And um, yeah, it was just a double whammy for me. I was, feel, felt very lucky every day. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Have a good day, guys. Bye, thank you. Thanks, Linda Lee. Um, and then our final question is Tessa Smith. Hi, everyone. Uh, Gil, I'm gonna get a little, little personal here. Uh, so you, <laughs> so you got, ended up, you got divorced, right? I did. So why did you change the ending where it's kind of a, is it just to have a happy ending or? That's a fantastic question. Um, I shot two endings because what I really wanted was to show that there can be joy after divorce if both parents are on the same page, if both parents genuinely love their children. That is the message I wanted to put out there um, because I, I have two kids and I think they feel very loved by both of us. Um, so I shot both endings because American audiences in general like a happy ending. Um, but I thought I handled both, I shouldn't say that, but I believe that I handled both honestly, as you know, not necessarily well, but honestly. And when we first screened the movie for a test audience of like 500 people, just like the big studios do, and I had my choice ending in which was uh, uh, Josh lived a half a mile away and he would come over every Sunday for family and it was a sweet, you know, it really showed that two people can get divorced and still be loving of their children, which is the truth. Mm -hmm. And here's the crazy thing. When we tested the movie, no one in the audience realized that they were divorced. The audience was rooting so strongly for them to stay together, they did not understand or see that Josh clearly said, wow, it only took me 20 minutes to get here from my new place. <laughs> and so the audience just, they were so on board with wanting them to heal that I thought, how can I not give them what they wanted. So I put the B version in and the, the numbers in the, um, the test screening jumped considerably. Huh. So that's what people wanted. So I wanted to give them what they wanted. You know, the movie's about love, no matter what it is, whether you're under the same roof or not. So it didn't change the, the context of the movie or the structure of the movie or even the message of the movie. You know, live your life simply, have gratitude for everyday things and your life's gonna be better because of it. And I believe that. So that's the answer. Awesome, well, thank you. It's interesting, I just that, say... it's interesting <laughs> that you, you caught that. 
I, yeah, I was interested. My parents are divorced and it was, I ended up having a better relationship with my dad after they were divorced. So I kind of, I was interested to see if it would go that route. Hi. Hi. Uh, so you had three dogs on set that you're working with. Um, how do you choose which is the main Henry? Uh, I know you you mentioned that that this is our main Henry, but I was just wondering what what specifically what characteristics or skills uh, did this one have that you used most often? Hi, um, that's a great question. So when we started training the dogs for the role of Henry. Um, you know, I already had two of the Henrys, mm -hmm. which was um, JC and her sister Jovi, and um, they already worked on a, a children's TV show called Mutton Stuff mm -hmm. um, for um, about a year. So, um, you know, just, just from having them on that show, um, you know, uh, Jovi, uh, JC, um, was just kind of more of the natural. Um, she's like really, really wants to please. Like, you know, I don't know if you can see her right now, but she's <laughs> really uh, loves people. And um, she just has that personality where she she um, likes working a lot. Mm -hmm. um, Jovi, her sister, is more um, a little more nervous of some things, um, you know, uh, uh, Jovi is really good at doing like action scenes as long as it's okay. like you know running um, and doing things like that but um, as far as like you know um, loud noises and stuff sometimes Jovi gets worried mm -hmm. um, uh, about some things so JC just naturally has like she's not afraid of anything she loves people um, she loves treats um, <laughs> so she has just kind of that you know what we look for in a, a lead dog um, she had the, the 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 characteristics of what you know it really entails of like you know doing multiple takes and multiple scenes because she wants to you know do a good job and she likes um you know making people happy and and you know um and also getting treats so she likes that reinforcement of just saying good job or good girl and getting pats and and getting loved on in between um so she really just kind of um naturally took the lead role once we started training them um all for the movie mm -hmm. and um you know it just kind of happens like every time i've done a project you always plan to have three playing the lead role and there's always one standout lead dog that ends up taking the, the you know doing the most of the film and, and it's just kind of interesting how that always happens and um jc just just had that natural star power <laughs> well she, she was amazing in the film and uh so impressed to see how much emotion you got we got from the dog on camera so you know thank you great answer Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of that is, you know, a it's a combination of the director, the way he directed. Gil was very patient and the way um, Gabriel interacted with the dog mm -hmm. and then also the training, you know, and also my other trainers that, you know, um, that were, were on the project with me. It's kind of like a, a team effort, you know, it's not just um, us and, you know, <laughs> the way we train the dog, it's everybody has to collaborate. And, you know, if the director isn't very patient because it's hard to work with animals in, in that, you know, in, in a lead role because it's, it, you know, it, 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 it's like they're kids, you know, they, their mm -hmm. attention spans are shorter, um, you know, and it's not, it's not like dogs or animals have, they don't have the same motivations as humans, mm -hmm. you know, um, so um, it takes a really special director like Gil to really be able to, to, to shoot an animal movie without, becoming impatient or you know if they mess up or if they get tired or whatever um you know you just have to you, you can't make them do anything they don't want to do um and gil was really really good about it he never got you know um upset he was was very sweet and kind and really really loved the dogs um so he was a really good fit 
for Good. for this movie. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks. Uh, next up, Lynette. Hi. I was oh, wondering if your dog could talk, JC there, what do you think it would say? Or she would say? Oh gosh, if she could talk. Um, you know, I think it would just be like a love letter. <laughs> um, JC is very sweet. You know, she just wants to be with people. Like she's actually, she's good with dogs and people but she just is like very like she gets very bonded um to you know her person whether it's her trainer or obviously she's very bonded to me but she had a, another trainer on the set um named john and she got very bonded to john and she got very bonded to gabriel so i think like everything that would come out of her mouth would just be like, I love you. I love you. <laughs> I mean, it's silly as it sounds. It would be like, you're so wonderful. Like everything that would come out of her mouth would be like a compliment and like, you know, an ego boost because she's so kind and, you know, just thinks people like she looks at you and it almost looks like she has like hearts in her eyes. You know, she just, she's just that kind of dog. You know, she's very friendly. Um, she's more into being pet with affection than she is um, motivated for treats, actually. She's one of those dogs where, like, you know, sometimes we have dogs that are just, like, all about the food. And she she likes treats, too, but she's more about being pleasing, you know, the, her person. So um, I think that she would just be, you know, like, you're the greatest, you're awesome, you're so, you know, I love you, I want to be with you, I want to hang out with you. Um, that's kind of how I would picture her talking to people. It's just being like, like a motivational speaker. I love that. Thank <laughs> you. We all need that in our life. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for your question. All right. Um, thanks. And next up, Amanda. <clears throat> Hi, Sarah. Hi, Amanda. I was excited to talk to you because I'm all about TikTok. And they said you had, you know, give us the little TikTok tips and all that. And I've done some TikToks with my dog. Oh, now this cool. is now this is the problem I always have though. Because mm -hmm. I when I want to get the dog's mouth to move. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, I had a call. <laughs> if I want to get the dog's mouth to move, though, what tips do you give for that? Because I've put like peanut butter. And is that is that bad? Uh oh. No. No. <laughs> okay. No. 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 I mean, dogs love almost every dog loves peanut butter. Um, you know, to get the dog's mouth to move, um, you know, one of the 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 main tricks we use on set. Um, is to teach a dog to um, bark on cue, um, which is to speak. Um, you know, uh, so um, that's, you know, obviously you get the mouth movement. So um, sometimes you can, you can, when you're training that, when you're training this speak, you can also kind of train like a quiet bark. Um, if you, you know, if you're using, um, I was talking earlier about using like a clicker, um, and if you click at the moment, like if you're, if you're teaching them to bark, like you, there's a, a variety of ways to teach them that, um, you know, I try to get them excited about something. And then when they do like a little sound, mm -hmm. you want to reinforce that sound, um, you know, and build, build up from that. Sometimes you can, if you, if the dog doesn't tend to bark a lot, you can like knock on the door, you know, and like kind of, and then they're like, in as soon as they bark, you know, um, you can reinforce that. I, 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 I try not to use that method, but sometimes you kind of have to, you know, um, get creative. Um, one time, um, I did train a dog um, that I had, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the TV show, uh, Dog with a Blog. It was on Disney a, a while back. Um, but my dog, Kuma, played the original Stan. And the dog had to talk in the TV show. Mm -hmm. um, I actually train him to open and close his mouth um, by clicking when he yawned. Um, and he was such, he was such a smart dog that he, if, you know, you, 
for dogs to be able to understand something on command, you have to do it a lot. You know, you have to like repeat it and for them to go, oh, hey, this is something, you know, I get a treat for that I get reinforced for. Um, so I actually trained him to open and close his mouth um, by when he yawned, I would say yawn and I would use like a hand cue and he would open and close his mouth. Um, you know, and it took a while to train that. It's not something that you can like teach them overnight. It takes a lot of patience and, um, but, it, but I was able to train him to open and close his mouth without him actually making a sound. So, which was cool because then you can like really make it look like they're, you know, talking. Um, but that's a little more advanced, but, um, I would say just your go-to would just be teaching them to speak which is a cue that we use to, to cue them to bark on command. So I would start with that. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for your question. Thanks, Amanda. Um, next up, Carrie. Hey, Sarah. So um, obviously you've been working with animals for a really long time. And what's the most enjoyable thing for you about being an animal trainer? Just a moment. Um, hi, can you hear me OK? Yeah, sorry, it's my. my... Uh, from my, oh, my, phone, okay. my phone heard me say, hey, Sarah, and I was like, oh, you're saying. <laughs> oh, like Siri? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, the most enjoyable thing about being an animal trainer to me, for me, is, um, you know, I mean, I love animals, and, and I know so many of us do, um, but being an animal trainer is um, a huge commitment. It's not just a job. It's like a lifestyle. You know, I live um, on a small ranch and I have, um, besides dogs, I have um, a couple cats and horses and a goat and a mini horse and a pig. Um, so, and a bird. <laughs> um, so I just like to be around all animals as much as possible. And, um, you know, training them to work on on set is super challenging because there's so many variables. It's not like training a dog, um, you know, to, to, you know, uh, you know, to sit or down or do, you know, like obedience, you know, like to, to, to walk on a leash properly. It's so much more advanced than that. Um, there's a lot of um, problem solving that comes into training animals for film and television. Um, you know, you always have to be, you have to, you know, be able to think on your, on your feet because um, you have to be like the, you know, you have to one, know how to read animals really well and how they're feeling and thinking at all times. Um, so I think for me, like being the most rewarding thing is just, it's like, having um having um like learned how to read animals and essentially talk to them you know in, in in my own way um you know i know when a dog is what it's feeling at all times um when it's sad when it's hungry when it's tired when it's you know what i mean like i really know what they're thinking and feeling and that really helps me be a good trainer on set because I really know how to read, um, you know, their body language um, and what they're saying without actually speaking words. Um, so to me, the most rewarding thing is having um, that, you know, uh, built that skill of really knowing um, how to communicate with animals and then using that ability to get a really good performance on 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 film and then seeing that, you know, seeing the when I saw, um, you know, the, the movie, um, I loved it. It was really cute and I was really proud of the dogs um, because, you know, we had some hard, you know, there's always challenges. There was, um, you know, we were shooting in um, Louisiana and, and it was hot, hotter there because of the humidity um, for the dogs. And so, you know, I had to be really protective of making sure they were always comfortable and kept cool and, and not overworked, you know, um, I'm really, really strict about things like that. Um, you know, just, just keeping, you know, the, the, the interest of the dogs, you know, um, is my priority. Um, so, you know, um, I, I love my job because, um, 
you know, it, it, it takes a long time to really become a good animal trainer and to know how to get the best performances out of an animal by really knowing each species and what makes them tick and how to read them. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it feels good when you see the finished product and you're like, wow, that looks really good on, on, on film. You know, it didn't, it didn't look like she was looking at her trainers ever. And I'm really proud of that because I don't like watching movies where the dog looks like it's looking at its trainer and taking the cue. Um, that always pains me. <laughs> I like it to look a little more organic. So thank you. Hopefully I answered your question. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for that. You're welcome. Thanks, Carrie. Um, Linda Lee. Hi. Hi. Um, so, so we're, um, we're some days, like, so you had like three dogs, um, and were some of the days when you were filming, like, the dogs just didn't cooperate, like, what, what do you do when that happens? Hi, um, well, that's a good question. Um, yeah, well, we had three dogs playing Henry, but I actually um, brought 10 dogs with me to Louisiana from California. Um, I live in California and I, I bought a, um, a, 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 a trailer, essentially, it's called a toy hauler trailer. I purchased one um, with an air conditioning just to have um, the dogs be really comfortable um, when we were on set. So they had like an air conditioned place to go and rest. Um, so we had 10 dogs with us the whole time we were in Louisiana. And we were there for a couple months. And, um, you know, there were definitely times where the dog gets a little bit tired um in and in that circumstance you know um again you can't ever make a dog do something that it doesn't want to do um so you know sometimes we would switch henry's that's why you have multiple dogs um if one is just you know um not good at that particular task or scene then you can always use another one you know if um that's always an option and why you have to have multiple dogs um but a lot of it comes down to the trainers working the dog and knowing you know how to get the best performance out of them um you know that's that's what makes an animal trainer you know professional animal trainer is that um we know how to get them to to we know how to motivate them to perform whether it's bringing our energy up you know like if they're um you know kind of tired and we kind of use these high you know that high baby voice you know that we use toward dogs um and get a little more you know get a toy that they're really excited about get um like say you know like the dog's kind of tired sometimes we'll use like um what we call hot bait which is like a a, a hotter form of treats like chicken or steak or something like that um so all of those things are like the tricks of the trade um what we use to motivate dogs on set and if there ever is a time they're not wanting to do it then we don't mean to do it we just i just tell the director um i'm sorry the dog needs a rest um and 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 everybody just has to wait you know because you can't make them do anything they don't want to do <laughs> thank you for your uh question Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Uh, all right, Tessa. Sorry. You're up. <clears throat> Hi, Sarah. Hi. Um, I have two dogs myself. I have a pug and a puggle. And sometimes, um, I don't want to say there's a rivalry between them, but if they're one of them is getting more attention from one of my daughters than the other one, they kind of get upset with each other a little. Now, how would you avoid that with, like, for example, when you have three dogs playing, you know, the same dog, do they ever get, not not nippy at each other, but, you know, kind of like, hey, I want to do this, or not really? Um, yeah, I mean, I have multiple dogs, too. Um, you know, I have a lot of dogs, and, you know, they're, they're working dogs, but they're also my pets. And, you know, dogs, just like people, all have different personalities. 
And um, for me, like, you know, I have some dogs that are really like mommy, mommy, mommy oriented and they get jealous because dogs can definitely get jealous mm -hmm. of each other for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I think um, I just like try to be very cognizant of that, you know, and, um, you know, the also just with my relationship with my animals, um, you know, um, I'm very kind and loving and I, you know, love to cuddle with them and be affectionate, but I'm also very strict. And I also like um, have that relationship where if somebody is doing a behavior that's undesirable and I say, hey, leave it or knock it off or no, um, you know, they, they know, you know what I mean? Like the, I have that established, um, like, um, kind of like parent, parent relationship mm -hmm. with my animals, you know? So, um, I think in that circumstance, you know, when I deal with like somebody's being jealous, I just, um, I try, I try to distinguish that. I mean, um, uh, extinguish, extinguish that <laughs> before it gets into something that may escalate, um, whether it's putting a dog, you know, um, I don't know, I, 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 I utilize crate training. So um, all of my dogs are trained to, you know, uh, sleep in crates or travel in crates if necessary. Sometimes I use those as a tool. Um, or, you know, if somebody's getting upset, like, you know, a lot of, like, a lot of the time I have conflicts with like a certain toy, you know, if mm -hmm. somebody like wants the toy and if they're getting, um, too possessive of the toy, I take it and I, I remove it. I take it away, you know, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, so, um, I guess that's kind of how I would approach things in the moment is just, um, you know, I have to be really careful because I have 16 dogs and they all go together. And that's like a very large, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, with multiple dogs don't really keep that many who can all kind of go together at once. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a giant dog park, you know, and you don't ever want something to turn into like a fight with that many dogs involved because it would be really bad. So I try to, you know, have, um, like I said, you know, being able to read the dog and knowing if somebody's getting, if somebody's getting jealous, then, you know, you may want to just not, you know, you want to, you want to extinguish that before it gets too out of control, you know, maybe set, if the dog's in your lap, set it down on the floor, you know what I mean? And just be like, Hey, fine. Nobody gets attention. That kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, hopefully that answers your question. So yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks.